seulement 45 ans, Marty Friedman fait déjà partie du Gotha restreint des guitareros, respectés pour leur technique hors du commun. Lors de sa venue au Trabindo à Paris, l'ancien artilleur de Megadeth et Cacophonie, qui officie désormais en solo, nous a accueillis dans son tourbus pour une démonstration des plus convaincantes de son talent. Je suis Marty Friedman, comment allez-vous How are you doing? It's Marty. I'm going to show you some guitar stuff today for Guitar Part Magazine. Check it out. I'm just going to make up a bunch of patterns and sort of explain what I do, okay? This is kind of the way I improvise. All right, um, let's say we're in the key of A. How about something like that? Let's take a repeating pattern like this one. That's it. But basically what I'm doing here is... I'm kind of following an A chord, but I'm taking a lot of notes that are outside the normal. What normally guys do in A is it's the same box, same position around this fifth fret here. Usually guys are playing like that, but I'm in the same position. But if you look what I'm doing, I'm playing groupings of fives right here. One, two, three, four, five, and then. So if you make that simpler, it's like. But then, after that, I, I extended and I went. So all of that stuff over A sounds quite interesting. It's kind of kind of a neat way to, you know, follow an A chord. Okay, this is a pattern um, bending strings, bending string. <laughs> You can do that pattern anywhere. So it's just... Let's stay in the key of A just to keep things simple, simple for everybody. Um, hang on a second. Something like that. It's like a kind of typical bluesy kind of thing, but it's a, it's a little interesting way to phrase it. It's basically just, a, I guess, a, a A, but it has like minor and major. There's your minor, there's your major. And then you go into like a G chord for a second, which is G. So it kind of has a lot of different kind of chordal sounds, even though you're playing like, you know, typical phrase. That's a nice one. Let's do this one. So basically what I'm doing there is I'm still in the key of A, but I'm like also mixing up major and minor again. Shit, I forgot what I played. about this is that's a really unique bunch of notes oh that's pretty cool too so um after you do this you can go thing and uh, basic what I'm doing is like I'm playing all very normal blues phrases but I'm adding notes that are not necessarily delicious in the sound of blues kind of thing 
All right, let me try something that maybe is not so bluesy sounding. <laughs> Okay, this is, this is, I guess, um, now to be able to play chromatic type of things is good, so here's a nice little chromatic pattern. That's one time around. And then the next time you do, so connected, it goes. You can't even play it. So I, I, I like to, when I do like patterns, I don't like it when they sound like you're doing an exercise. You know, if it sounds like it's just going, that's meaningless to me. So I like to have it where it goes up and down and in and out in strange number configurations. So I like to put the ones in odd places like that. Okay, if you're again in the key of e, A minor here, you can go. That kind of thing. So I guess you go. Like odd numbers. So that would be 10 in a row, 4 and then 6. So when it repeats, it doesn't sound like so much like, like a piano exercise. You know, it sounds more kind of flowing. I like that. Okay, I'll take so something from one of my songs called Give Me a Dose. And um, at the end, the song ends. Go. That's the lick that I play, which if you look at it, the position is a very normal blues kind of place, but... All right, already that's like a sweet way to play that. So that's kind of an interesting phrase within blues because it almost has a odd time feel. So if you if if you copy what I'm doing, you'll notice that it probably sounds different than most blues licks that you're normally used to playing, just because of the way the notes come in unusual places. So that's a very useful um, just way to think about playing blues. Mo most of the time, when you hear blues, it's all in the same area, like. Which is like, it's fine, but like it just sounds like everybody, you know? So you need to take the notes that are in between. Notes that are in between the notes and stick them in there. Because that's going to make you sound more original, because you can choose. Everybody's playing. Doesn't matter what you play in there, but if you add strange notes. It's more interesting. So here's here's a way to think about that. You're you're an E, right? And then you go. Then you have an E minor arpeggio. Then a B minor. Then just do kind of a normal lick there, but this is a nice little pattern. Basically, I'm just making stuff up, but the thing is to put in notes that are not normally there. Like, um, you know, most of the time guys are... Those kind of notes. This fingering, but what about these notes here? So what if you did this? So you go up with this normal finger and then down. See how that works? Can you translate for that so people understand it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, it's important. There's all these other notes in here that are not necessarily in the scale. Yeah, you got
got to play the odd notes within the normal phrases. The reason I have my pick like this is because I don't like the sound of muted strings. Most of the time, you know, you, if you hold your pick like this, you get... I hate that sound. I want to hear... hear the notes. If you're doing this, you can't hear the notes, you know, so I want to hear them ring, so I keep my hand far away from the strings, like that. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I do that. So, but like if I'm playing a melody, I'll hold the other strings so they don't ring. And then while I'm doing that, I might use this finger to pick. strings and I'm just kind of based I'm not very accurate about it. I'm just banging the strings like that so I'm just banging with this finger Yeah, but like when you're playing melodies, you know, you don't want the other notes to ring, so you know. It's terrible. I can't do any of this. Hate that. Yeah. If I like it, I'm gonna play it. So there's nothing. Everything that I do is what I do. You know. So there, other guys can do the, all this other stuff better. But my whole thing is really about melody. Really, it all based on melody. My playing is not perfectly accurate. Um, but it's all melody. So everything that. If you hear on my record, it's based on a melody, not based on any kind of technique that has a name. You know, I don't even know the names of the techniques. You know, they have a legato or sweep picking or alternate pick. I don't know what any of those things mean. What I say might be confusing, so the best thing to do is just watch what I did and learn the playing by ear. And don't really worry about what I was saying so much, but learn the stuff by ear. Especially if you can, this is DVD, right? You can see the stuff, so use your eyes and copy everything exactly the way you see it. And then you'll figure out the reason why I'm doing this kind of stuff. But it's very important to like use your eyes to like learn from other guitar players, your friends and stuff. Because sometimes you, nobody's going to show you everything. You've got to watch from you know, on stage or something. You see something cool happen. You've got to know how to pick it up with your eyes. So um, don't really worry about the explanation so much, but use your eyes and, and copy things. How about that? All right.